All right, welcome back to the show. Kyle and I are now joined by a man at the center of some controversy this week, Emmy Award-winning broadcaster Roy Firestone. Roy, thanks for coming by. My pleasure. Roy, an interview you did 27 years ago caused a huge backlash on social media this week when it was re-aired as part of ESPN's O.J. Made in America documentary. Still regret how you asked O.J. that question? Well, in context, absolutely. I mean, 27 years later, God, I, want, I need a bath after watching that. Right. You know what I mean? I need a shower. Uh, I'm disgusted by it. But in context, at, with distance, in the moment, and this was 1989 now, this was uh, 27 years ago, um, there were no allegations. There was a, a controversy, which we addressed, but there were no criminal investigations of O.J. Simpson. There was no criminal record at the time of the taping. Eventually, we saw something else. Um, and there was no reason to, to suspect that, as he played it down, that there was anything really bad going on there. And then, of course, I kind of bought into the O.J. myth. Sure. Right. Now, now you knew, I think I read somewhere, maybe Huffington Post, you knew this was going to air. Yes. So are you surprised by the backlash on social media? Let me give you an idea what we're talking about. I've had a couple of tweets, and I know you can't buy into all this stuff. We've all had yep. negative tweets, and it's part of the game. I'm a big boy. But to have somebody say, I hope you have two daughters and they're raped or murdered because yeah. you're an enabler. Another guy, you're the low-life scum because you allowed some, this murder to happen. I mean, this stuff, you talk about people running with stuff. Yeah. It, and it, here's why it's really appalling to me. I've, I've, my whole life and my whole career, I've tried to speak out in, in issues that I thought were important, uh, social issues. I do speaking all over the country, and yeah. one of them is about domestic violence. Every nine seconds in this country, a woman is beaten or killed, there's five or, or 10 a day in America who are killed, women are killed by their spouses or boyfriends. Uh, it's one third of the entire planet has been abused or um, assaulted. It's the number one killer of women. I take this stuff very seriously. So to be in distance without context, ridiculed by people and saying, I enabled this, makes me ill. Well, proportion and perspective, we know this. It just doesn't exist on the internet. But there, there was a moment that I watched you called him Juice. Right. Some thought, boy, that's clubby. That's, yeah, that's, oh, that's... it was chummy, Colin. It was definitely chummy. Were you that's and part of friends? Uh, I was a, f a colleague. I don't know if we can dist distinguish between... Socially, did you hang out? No, never. But we worked together. He did one, a Sunday night football one, one game. I obviously had him on the show before that several times. He was OJ. He was Naked Gut. He was Saturday Night Live. He yeah. was NFL. He was America's hero. You know, so, so when, when I called him Juice... So did everybody else, pretty much. Everybody, there was a familiarity, a chumminess. It came off, and that's where it really makes me disgusted when I look at it now. I, I, this answer's probably obvious, but was there any criticism of this interview at the time? No, no, that's, that's an interesting question. Absolutely not. In fact, a lot of people were applauding. Hey, it's the first time he's ever been addressed domestic violence. I want to say one other thing. I'm not congratulating myself on this, but I'm somewhat proud of the fact that Marsha Clark and the prosecution entered this interview uh, as evidence in the OJ trial. Right. It was rejected, but they entered it, thought enough of it substantially that at least Roy asked him about it. Could I have followed up with more questions? In retrospect, you bet I could. Do I regret not having follow-up questions? In retrospect, had I known more? Of course. Roy, you were known as a wonderful interviewer, the, the Oprah Winfrey of sports. Oh, you, thanks. You I take it as a out, compliment. Yeah, you brought out people's emotion. I'm wondering for you personally, being in the center of this storm. Now. How, yes, right now. You built this great reputation, this great career, and now out of nowhere, people are taking a dump on it. Emotionally, how do you feel? Are you hurt? Yeah, it hurts to the extent that I'm a, uh, there's an uh, attempt to affix me with something monstrous like domestic violence. On any level, it bothers me. But we've all taken hits. You have, you have, especially on Twitter. Something is taken out of context or run with. You said one thing and they, they affix you with something else entirely. So, I mean, what bothers me, I'm appalled by some of the reaction to the extent that they think I somehow enabled this monster. Then make no mistake, I believe he murdered two people savagely. There's not, no gray area for me. I did almost right away after the murders. I said, wait a minute, the day of the murder, the next day when it was reported, I said, didn't he have a domestic violence issue that I talked about? And they said, when he's in Chicago, I went, oh, okay, so he's exonerated because he's... I didn't know the timeline at the time. But I remember saying, there's something here. 
And um, yeah, it does bother me, and it, it makes me sick that I'm associated on any level with enabling something as monstrous as domestic the violence. The documentarian, if, if that's a word, that it I is. think has done a very good job. Definitely, Ezra did a great job. You are included in the documentary, but but it's on tape. Yep. Why weren't you asked to be interviewed among the 40 to 50 people who were? I can't answer that question. I would like to. Um, let me say one thing. I'm very proud of my years at ESPN. I have a lot of friends over there. I'm not here to knock ESPN. I'm not here to knock Ezra Edelman. He did a great job with this documentary. It's really compelling. Yeah. But it would have been nice. I think it would have been more journalistically sound if they interviewed me and say, what was going through your mind when you did this? And when you look at it now, like you're doing now, all these years later, what do you think? That wasn't afforded to me. And I think because of that, it comes off out of nowhere and it damns me by the public to a certain extent. Not everybody, but to a certain when, extent, when you some of the public. When you, I guess a great attorney is, he's part presenter, he's part manipulator, he's part academic. You know, I've watched this OJ documentary mm -hmm. and I've watched the, uh, I guess, I, and I say this not um, anything more than a compliment to the late Johnny Cochran, as a bit of a manipulator. Yeah. Carl Douglas, he's been interesting. Mm -hmm. um, how does that land for you? you? You knew the LAPD, you knew some of the attorneys. I've watched that and been fascinated by that. Not appalled, but fascinated. How does it land for you? Because you were a celebrity in Los Angeles, too. Let me say first a couple of things. I knew Johnny Cochran through the Michael Jackson case. I knew him a little bit. I remember when they were using my interview as to enter as evidence, the first day Johnny Cochran goes to the judge, and this is televised, the whole world's watching is, judge, this isn't Mike Wallace, it's Roy Firestone. Throw out this interview. <laughs> and they did, they threw it out. Um, but I want to say one other thing, and I want to be really careful, because I respect and admire and appreciate the work that policemen do. And it's hard work and it's thankless work. And I do a lot of fundraising for them. But there was a lot of missed opportunities for the LAPD. Uh, Marsha Clark personally told me only a couple of weeks ago that they would go up to OJ's house even after the frantic 911 calls and ask for autographed footballs from OJ Simpson. Hey, Juice, why don't you just kind of chill out? You know, we won't do anything this time, but watch yourself. In other words, there was, there was only one a detective that was really on this out of, out of about eight, with eight different trips, and he, and he kept it to himself. So I, I think the LAPD dropped the ball. I think a real good cop would admit they dropped the ball. Roy, very quickly, because I want to move on to a bigger question. I just want to be clear on this. You're involved in this controversy now. The documentary put you in a bad light. You still it have not... Whatever light it is. You but... still have not been offered an opportunity to go on ESPN and defend yourself. No, just... no. Okay, now a bigger question. The documentary is fascinating. It's yes. great. I don't like what was done to you, but it is fascinating. Why are we still today fascinated by O.J. Simpson? Why do we believe he is some big symbol or testament about America and about how America feels about race? Because he was in the Mount Rushmore of celebrity athletes from the 70s until well into the 2000s. O.J., M.J., two M.J.'s, Magic, Michael, he was on that Mount Rushmore. And... He was a celebrity, he was compelling, he was a superstar, he was handsome, he was dashing, he was a, a role model at one point, although Jim Brown would be quick to, to, to defend his side that says he was nothing like a role model. He was a fascinating figure. We saw him on our, on our screens every day, whether it's Saturday Night Live or the NFL or Hertz or Naked Gun. He was in our living room, Jason, and because of that, the appalling horror of murdering, butchering two people is still hard for people to comprehend, and they're fascinated even today, 22 years later, after the case was adjudicated. Roy, in 10 seconds, could you tell people what you're doing now? Well, I just did a brand new uh, piece for the Orioles channel on Jim Palmer and his autistic son, Spencer, which is probably my best work I think I've ever done. I say that with humility, I hope. And I'm trying to make that a documentary. We're talking to the folks who put Rain Man together. That's one of the things. I also do Good Day LA, and I blog, and I write, and doing radio and all over the country. Roy, stuff. thank you very much for coming by. We really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, gentlemen.